complementary and alternative medicine is now morphing more into integrative holistic medicine modalities that they are complementary to Western medicine, what we consider surgery, medications, and some manual medicine, but also integrating holistic approaches to empower patients to self-care, to heal themselves, believing that they can heal themselves. And so we offer art therapy, rec therapy, music therapy, uh, yoga, ch uh, tai chi, qigong, and a myriad of behavioral health modalities, meditative modalities, that I say calm our mind, relax our body, and renew our spirit. And the key to the meditative practices is mastering the breath. When we can master the breath, then we can truly calm our mind, relax our body, and renew our spirits. And so it's been a very dynamic process at Fort Belvoir. Every week we do yoga, we do Reiki self-care, and I've been practicing that for almost two years now. And it's been very fulfilling. Our patients love this practice. It allows them to relax, be at more at peace, reduce their stress and anxiety, and it helps them sleep. And I joke with them, the hardest thing about doing this practice is doing it, the discipline to do it, because they see the therapeutic benefits with this practice, as well as a lot of our other uh, mind-body practices, guided imagery, taking that walk along the Potomac River, visualizing the beautiful sunrise or sunset on the beach. It's just very healing and very therapeutic for people. The Reiki self-care treatment protocol is very flexible. The time is also flexible. Um, it uses eight hand placements and each hand placement is held for about three to five minutes. You can practice on a daily basis with all eight hand placements for a treatment time of 30 minutes or you can just pick and choose one or two hand placements and practice for five to ten minutes. I have been practicing Reiki since 2004 I use Reiki self-care on a daily basis. My connection to the military, my husband uh, is a retired Army Colonel. Our oldest son is a U.S. Army Ranger veteran. He actually just finished his service and he's going to school now. So I've been through uh, five deployments with him and um, when he started to um, go to Afghanistan, I started working more actively with Reiki and the soldiers. I started providing uh, Reiki sessions on the table at the Malone House at the old Walter Reed. And it, in a way, it was for me about, you know, doing something, giving back while he serves his country overseas. I would explain Reiki self-care as an effortless form of meditation. It just takes your time. And using eight different hand placements over our major organs and endocrine system, it moves energy, believing that we can move energy, that the body is self-healing and self-regulating. And we can measure energy. We can measure energy with EEG in our brain, EKG in our heart. Those lines better be going up and down or it's not a good day. And EMG in our muscles. And so believing we can move this energy through our body to calm our mind, relax our body, and renew our spirit. And it is an effortless form of meditation that you can do it anywhere at any time, sitting up, lying down, to give you that peace, what I call pure peace in the present moment, or that heaven on earth. The reason I really enjoy the integrative approach, I'm an osteopathic family physician, and I do believe the body is self-healing and self-regulating. And so we have to do our part the discipline to do the next right thing. Many of our patients that we see on the inpatient substance abuse program are at the lowest por portions of their life. And so it's about making better choices in their lives. And so they're more open to want to get better, to want to heal their mind, their body, and their spirit. And we talk about the addiction program as a boot camp, a boot camp for their mind and their body and their spirit. And so I think they're more open because they do want to improve. They want to choose to live choose to live in a positive manner and healthy habits and a healthy lifestyle as what I call lifestyle medicine. Choosing healthy habits from our diet, from exercise, from our spiritual lives, practicing love and forgiveness.
It has been my experience that soldiers and their family members um, are open to this practice because they simply have to place their hands. They do not have to count themselves into a meditative state or recite any mantras that may be against their belief system or outside of their culture. I had a patient a few months ago that said every time she'd go to bed she'd get numbness and tingling in her hands and her feet just her hands and her feet, and it prevented her from to be going to be able to go to bed. And so I had a couple medical students with me, and so I wasn't sure what's going on, so I asked them. And they came up with all these different diagnoses, which really didn't fit the patient because it was just when she went to bed, no other time. So in my mind, I started thinking that this patient's on the go from the time she gets up to the time she goes to bed. And so I taught her Reiki self-care. Three days later, she called me back and she said the first two nights that she was doing Reiki self-care, she had no numbness and tingling in her hands and her feet. She thought she fixed herself. The third night, she skipped the Reiki self-care and these symptoms went back. My diagnosis was sympathetic overstimulation. This patient was on the go from the, from the get-go, from the morning until when she went to bed. So we taught her a meditative practice, how to calm her mind, relax her body, and renew her spirit. And I think she's a believer. Science does not yet know how Reiki works. My personal model is that the still stationary hand placements build a bridge between our mind and our body and remind our system of its ability to be still. The science behind meditation in terms of neuroplasticity is growing each and every day. Neuroplasticity, the growth of new neurons in our brain, is an exciting new field. And the implications are huge, especially in the population in the military we serve with post-traumatic stress disorder, traumatic brain injury, anxiety, depression, attention deficit. If we engage our patients in these meditative practices, the discipline to do these each and every day, they can help heal themselves. And the, the science supports this and it's an exciting uh, venture into the future to explore these meditative practices to heal our mind, our body, and our spirit.